what is going on guys my name is Sam and welcome back to another episode of this very new series over at BurgerGames.com now today I'm going to be showing you a lovely build for £800 remember these prices were all seen and chosen on when it was the 25th of July so I hope you guys enjoy this video if you have any questions feel free to pop them down below and I hope you enjoy the video see you soon so to get us started I chose the CPU with a boost turbo clock of 3.8 GHz and that is the i5-3570K and this is a quad core processor with the socket being the LGA1155 and this has been well known the CPU for giving high performance gaming experiences for the values it so this is the CPU. Now moving on to the motherboard I went and chose the ASRock Z77 Extreme 4 another very popular gaming product and really this is very decent for the price I mean like I said people are loving this motherboard for gaming and it sports SLI and Crossfire which is amazing because the 400 budget build didn't and this is only a budget build you gotta remember even though I've only picked one GPU for this there's always you know space to expand and it also only you know it can support up to 32 gigs of RAM and like I said this is not as much as we're going to be um, suggesting or you know recommending but like it's like I said, always place to expand. Now that is the uh, the ATX motherboard. Moving on. Now a cooler or a CPU cooler. I didn't really suggest in the last episode to go with aftermarket cooler, but uh, in this episode I am because we have a little bit more money to spend. And it's the Nortua NHD14 for sixty pound at a around about twelve to nineteen decibels with 900 to 1200 RPM on the fan speed and as you can see all them supported sockets so I think this is a very good price a very once again highly recommended game community for a good CPU where you can overclock quite high and the temperatures will stay reasonable with this so uh, yeah not tried it myself but there's plenty of reviews about it on the internet Aha the GPU the one that all the gamers love but some people really don't care about but it's one of the most important things to do with gaming as it's going to provide all them textures and all, all the goodness within gaming now I went with the MSI GeForce GTX 670 now you're probably thinking I know the 60 that wasn't that didn't you, didn't you recommend that last time? no last time I recommend the 660 well actually no was it? Hmm. no it was the 650 Ti Boost if I, if I remember rightly now the difference between this and the other, uh, uh, people get a little bit confused with the way different, you know, companies sort of brand their new series. And the old one was the 600 series, and this is the 700. The difference between this one and the last one is this has 1,152 clocks, or sorry, cores, and the old one had 768, if I remember rightly. But the clock on this is much higher than the other one. But as you can see, features are quite quite similar to the old one if you are also looking at the old video like I am right now but the good thing about this is it can actually swap up to freeway SLI although we don't actually have free PCI 3.0 16 slots on our motherboard so that's a bit of a shame but this is the MSI GeForce 670 rolling in at 215 pounds enjoy now the RAM is something a little bit different we're going to choose the Corsair Vengeance 8 gigs of RAM. Nothing too much different than the old build you may be thinking, but this is actually the great thing about Corsair Vengeance series is they, you know, have overclockers in the mind, and this is what they really highly advertise on the website too. Nothing really different, so not going to, you know, interfere with your performance with gaming between 4 gigs or 8 gigs, but I would suggest any gaming sort of relaxing budget build to go at least 8 gigs unless they're doing anything crazy or rendering, where then I may choose or recommend 12 or 16 gigs like I have but up to you guys but this is a DDR3 8 gigs of RAM and yeah pretty nice RAM but it's very high profile so make sure you guys have got enough space above the or next to the uh, the cooler and whatever whatever you guys are going to be using now the PSU we're going to be using the Corsair Enthusiast 650 watt power supply now for 76 pound you know power supply is nothing too special it's not too much special stuff about them but this is not modular, I know a lot of people do like modular, but it does have one fan instead of no fans or 110 fans. But otherwise, a very good 
well branded products obviously when you want to go with PS shoes you want to make sure they're from a very dominant brand and Corsair is definitely a very very dominant brand now for the storage we're going to be using the same thing as we used previously which is the Western Digital Caviar Blue at one terabyte now for next episode where we're going to be spending 1200 pounds we're going to be maybe investing in something a little bit more and i've already sort of chosen but i thought at the end of the day this is only for gaming we're not you know doing recording i mean obviously you could record with this system but we're not specialized in recording so this here the one terabyte will have enough for your um your operating system any programs and all, all your games i mean i have many games and they will fit in my 500 gig hard drive lovely but um yeah very very good uh drive so there is the western digital caviar blue now for the case we went for a little bit different we went for a case which was 75 pounds and it is the fractal design define r4 now remember these cases are personal preference there's a minimal amount of difference between one case and the other except for a few little mini features in between but this is a atx mid tower case and it only comes in black so Obviously, the thumbnail picture I had was white, and it was a 600T, I believe, by Corsair. But I looked at it, and it was a little bit too expensive, so I changed my mind. But anyway, this has two five and a quarter inch external bays, while it also having eight internal 3.5 inch bays and another two 2.5 inch internal bays. And this is compatible for ATX motherboards and micro ATX motherboards. So this is your case. Now that about wraps it up for the £800 gaming PC build for August. Now if you want to follow me on Twitter or ask any questions on the YouTube comments feel free to. My Twitter will be down below as it is on the screen as well. Now remember to stay to the end of the video because you might be interested in clicking on one of the annotations which will be on the screen towards the £1,200 build and the £400 budget build which is, like I said, annotated at the end of the screen. So my name has been Sam Pope and good night.